Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this poster but also how you can remove the background of an image so that you can place it on top of another image. So we're going to go to insert pictures, click on the drop down. You can select a picture from your own files but I'm going to use one of the stock images provided by Word and I'm just going to type in running and scroll down and find a picture of my choice. I'm going to choose this one here for the background and I'm going to choose this one here and just click insert. So when your picture is inserted into Word you can't move it so just select it and right click on it. Go down to wrap text and select in front of text and then do that the same with the other one. Okay, so this one we're going to ignore for a minute and this one, you can only really do this with a plainish background, otherwise Word will struggle with it. So we're going to get rid of that background. So go up to picture format. If picture format hasn't appeared, it's because you haven't selected the photograph. Then go over to remove background. Now everything that Word's going to get rid of will turn pink and everything that it will keep will show through. Now if we just zoom in, you can see Word has done a reasonable job. You can see with the fingers here, it isn't brilliant. So what you can do is you can use either mark areas to remove or mark areas to keep. So we're going to mark areas to keep. And you just use this little pencil just to click and drag over the fingers. Now you can see sometimes some white will shine through. You can't reduce the size of this pen. All you can do is just go over the fingers and see how well Word will fix it for you. Then you can go to mark areas to remove. You can try and go back over the white section to see if Word will remove that, but you can see it has caught that finger again. So sometimes you just have to live with a little bit of white. Hopefully that won't ruin your picture too much. But if it does bother you, you can play around with it to see if you can remove it. There's also a little bit on his shoe down here. There we go, and just at the end of his shoe there. Perfect. Once you're happy, just select Keep Changes and zoom out. And you can now see that we have removed that background. Now there's one more customization that I'm going to do on here. So select it, go to Picture Format, and I'm going to go up to Corrections. And this is where we can soften or sharpen our image and also change the brightness and contrast. So I just want to make this a little bit brighter so you can see where the original image has been selected here. So I'm just going to go up one to brighten that image. So the next thing I'm going to do is form the background. So that's why I've selected this track image here. I'm going to select it and rotate it and enlarge it right across the page. Now I'm also going to send it to the back. So once I've selected it, go up to this send backwards, click on the drop down and select center back. Then I'm going to make sure it's selected and I'm going to make some alterations. So with the color, I'm going to select the color and I'm going to desaturate it to this one here. Then to transparency, I'm going to take it right down to this one here. And I may go back up to color and just take that saturation just down a little bit more. Then I'm just going to crop this. We've got quite a lot of space around the runner. So select the image, go to picture format, go to crop and click. Then with these black markers, just click and drag them to where you want to crop your image. I'm going to crop most of it out. It just makes it easier. There we go. Once you've done that, just hit the enter or return key and there we've cropped that image. I'm going to make it much bigger so it reaches across the page. Now in order to create a shadow, I'm just going to duplicate this image. So select it, hold down your alt or option key, click and drag. And then with the back, just deselect them both. And with this back image here, if you're not sure which image you've actually clicked on, you can select a picture, go to picture format and go to selection pane. And this is all the layers in your picture. So if you want to make sure that you've selected the background, you can see it's this one here, switch it off, it will disappear. Picture two, just use these eyes to click on and you can tell which one of these layers you're clicking on. So to select it, just click on the line that it's on. And then we want to go and make some customizations. So go to picture format. So I'm going to go up to color and I'm going to desaturate it 
then go back up to color and we're going to go down to this gray one at the bottom here and then go to artistic effects and I'm going to go down to this one here and then I'm just going to move the top one over the top here to create that slightly artistic shadow. Now if you want to group them together you can select both of those images so you can select picture two, hold down your command or control key and select the top picture so you can see they're both selected. Go to group and then select group and then now they're one image. You can go back up and ungroup them if you want to, that's completely fine. So now we're going to add some text. So go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out text box, enter in your text. And now we're just going to customize this text. I'm going to select it, go to the home tab, change the font to Britannic. And then using this icon here, I'm just going to increase that font size until I'm happy. And I'm going to go to shape format. I'm going to get rid of the outline here, select no outline, get rid of the shape fill to no fill. And then I'm just going to go to align, align to center. Making sure that this runner word is in the center of the box. I'm going to go to home. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to use this extra one for the name. And then I'm going to duplicate this one more time and use it for additional text. So for this one, I'm just going to put in runner of the year. Then I'm going to go to home and reduce the size of it. If it doesn't reduce the size, deselect it, reselect it, and then use the decrease font size tool. There we go. And then I'm going to select that you don't have to do this bit, but if you select it just to give it a little extra interest, right click on the text and go down to font. Then within this dialog box, go to advanced. Go down to spacing here and I'm going to put 30 points between my text and press enter and then just reducing the size of that text. So I'm going to use that text there, maybe go up one. There we go. And I'm going to copy this text and use it at the top. Let's put some text in up here. Then I'm going to center it again, go to align, align to center. Here I'm going to change the name. And then again, deselect it, reselect it, go to the Home tab and reduce the size. Move that to here. And then we're going to grab some more text. I'm going to use this box, click and drag out a new box at the bottom. Just going to go and customize this. I'm going to change this font to Heli Vector, reduce the size of it, and then use this one to change it all to lowercase. And then I'm going to do the same as I did before, go to font and go to advanced again and just increase the spacing by five. Just increase the spacing between those letters to add a little bit of interest. Put that down the bottom, copy and paste this. And again, I'm just going to customize this by changing it to lowercase. And now we're going to insert a logo. So go to insert pictures, picture from file. I'm going to select this logo here and click insert. Again, any picture inserted can't be moved. So you need to right click on it, go to wrap text in front of text, and then I'll be able to move it. Now with this one, I'm going to go to align, align to center. Just use my arrow keys to move it up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to move that one up. And again with that one, I'm just going to try and make the spacing the same either side of this logo. Once I'm happy, select this one. Select one of them, hold down the command or control key to select the other. Go to shape format, align, align to top, and they'll both be lined up. Then we're just going to insert some graphics. So go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and select the rectangle or the square. Click and drag out a rectangle. Once inserted, we'll get rid of the border line, which is here, so no outline. Shape fill, we can select from any of these colors or we can go to more fill colors. And then we can try and match some of the colors in his tunic. If you've got the eyedropper tool, you can select it and simply just go over his tunic, select a color of your choice, click OK. And we can move that one up there. We'll just go to align align to center and then just keep clicking on send backwards until the text comes through. Keep clicking 
and eventually it will come through. For the text, I'm going to change it. So select that box and then go to the Home tab and select White. I'm just using my arrow keys. I'm just going to move that text down. Deselect it. Check you're happy with the alignment of those words. Push that down one more time. Then with this outer rectangle, I'm going to click and drag out another one. Then go back to Shape Format, Shape Fill, More Fill Colors, and choose another slightly lighter color. Click OK reduce the size of it and move it down to here. Once again, align, align to center and then keep sending backwards until it goes behind that one there. Okay, I'm just going to move that runner word up a little bit. There we go. And with the gray one, I'm just going to click and drag out another one, reduce the size of it, rotate it, If I zoom in, this can sometimes be a little easier. There we go. And then you can put that next to the name. You don't have to do this bit, just adds a little bit of interest. Perfect. So once you're happy with it, you can either export this as a template, a PDF file or a Word document. And you can simply do that by going to File, Save, just as a normal Word document. Save As will allow you to do it as PDF. And all you need to do is go down to the file format and select PDF. Alternatively, go to File, Save as Template. Now, if you say this is a template, you can use it over and over again. Any alterations you make, you'll just simply be asked to save it as a different document. Make sure you're on Microsoft Word template and make sure you're in the templates file. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.